in God's name. Good morning and welcome to worship at Holy Trinity on this beautiful, beautiful day as we gather together to serve in God's name. So what sign did you see coming in? It's all about serving today, the next part of our mission statement, loving, living, serving, giving in God's name. So we'll look at that a little bit later. We also have, of course, as a theme, um, Praise, prayer, and purpose to go along with that serving, too. That'll be in the message, so that's coming up in just a bit. Also, some brief announcements as we get started with worship. Thank you so much for everyone who was involved with the Taste of Habitat. And we're getting a good bit of echo going all of a sudden in my mic. We've tested it a couple different times today. The rest of the time in worship was great. So there we go. We're already getting some of it worked out. You never know so you're there. And, of course, it's when you're live, too, right? That something's going to happen. So we had Taste of Habitat. Thank you so much for all who were involved with that. It was a great event. Someone wondering, well, who's going to even show up for it? But it was a full house and um, a, lot of, a lot of money raised for Habitat for Humanity, which was great for the service of this church and great participation from Holy Trinity. It was wonderful to see so many folks out there. Also, we had our Feed the Homeless event over the course of the weekend with the gathering together sandwiches and distributing them with other Lutheran churches, too, in the area. That was great. Thank you to everyone who was involved with that as well. And I also want to let you know, too, our financial administrator, Lily Wong, who's been with us for a number of years, she will be finishing up probably either the end of this month or early next month. We don't have an exact date yet, but she will have um, kind of a finalization to her position here soon. She is looking to be home more often, and she has a grandbaby on the way. But we also want to make sure to thank her very much for these faithful years of service. So we'll let you know more when we have specific dates, but wanted you to be aware of an upcoming transition there, but also to make sure if you do see her around in the office too, to tell her thank you for the, uh, the faithful ministry she has had here at Holy Trinity. We also have uh, another announcement. I hear there's a announcement that was actually from the CDC. 
And there's a video on this, and I think you're some of the first to hear this, so uh, let's see what this is all about. This is Mark Beatty, pastor of Holy Trinity Lutheran Church. Here at the beautiful campus of First United Lutheran Church, I am here on behalf of the CDC to have an important announcement for you. And of course, the CDC has let us know all about mask, mask guidance, mask mandates. But this is a whole different guidance we have, and it's from September 18th to October 9th. It's not about masks. It's all about diapers. You see, the CDC I'm talking about is not the Center for Disease Control. It is our Cobb Diaper Challenge between, hopefully, Holy Trinity Lutheran Church and First United Lutheran Church. There are Cobb Diaper Days every year in the fall, and the actual reality of it is we do have brothers and sisters out there in the community that have a hard time just getting by with whether to buy food, whether to pay a utility bill, or buy diapers. So this is one little way we can make a difference, but we also want to make it a competition to see who the best church is, who can get the most diapers. So, Pastor Randy Jones, do you accept our challenge for diaper days and cop diaper challenge? Absolutely. We have got you, and we will beat you. That sounds like a pretty tough challenge from Pastor Randy. Now, I would say, though, as we look at this, Pastor Randy, would you say that we are saved by our works and works righteousness and whoever gets the most diapers is probably going to go to heaven first? Absolutely, positively not. <laughs> right. We are saved by grace and God's grace. And also with churches, too, we are not called to be in competition together in reality, but to be family of God together, to lift each other up, support each other, love each other, because in the end, we are one we are Christian one. church together. And However... For the next three weeks, we're going to pretend that it's all about the diapers. So, we've got the pastors down. Now, it's up to the congregations to make it official. So, do you, Holy Trinity, and do you, First United Lutheran Church, accept the Cobb, Cobb Diaper, Diaper Challenge of 2022? Yeah. Okay, so Holy Trinity, to make it official, do you accept the Cobb Diaper Challenge of 2022? Yeah. All right. So from between today and the next three weeks, please bring in diapers. We want to have a mound. We want to have a mountain of diapers there in the fellowship hall. When we did this before with Christ Lutheran Church, I think we had somewhere around 12,000 diapers, and Christ probably had close to eight. And I think it was somewhere around 20,000 diapers, if I remember correctly. Uh, combined total that we had, which was amazing. So let's see, maybe, who knows, maybe we'll even beat that this year. We'll see what we can do. And for those of us joining online too, and especially since we're just now beginning that, you could ship them. Even our members from Texas and different places too, if you want to be part of this challenge, you could always ship diapers and we'll get them right over here to the fellowship hall and add them to the mountain. So, and of course, it'll be a fun way then of serving in God's name, which is our theme for today as well. And so with that, let us stand together in joy, prepared to serve God's, in God's name and to give thanks for this day. This is the day that the Lord has made.
we continue with our confession and forgiveness in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together in Christ. By grace, we have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. May Almighty God strengthen us with the power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in our hearts through faith. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. For our prayer of the day, I'd like to invite one of our youth to come forward to lead us, Elizabeth Vogt. Let us pray. God among us, we, your servants, praise your holy name on this Lord's day. Inspire us at all times to continually praise you in all we do and all we are. From the rising of the sun to its setting each day, with joy in our hearts, and praise on our lips. May we bless your holy name from this time on and forevermore. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of God's holy word. A reading from Amos. Hear this, you that trample on the needy and bring to ruin the poor of the land, saying, when will the new moon be over so that we may sell grain, and the Sabbath so that we may offer wheat for sale? We will make the ephah small and the shekel great and practice deceit with false balances, buying the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals, and selling the sweepings of the wheat. The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob, surely I will never forget any of their deeds. Word of God, word of life. Okay. Psalm 113 will be read responsively. Hallelujah, give praise, you servants of the Lord, Praise the name of the Lord. From the rising of the sun to its going down, let the name of the Lord be praised. Who is like the Lord our God who sits enthroned on high? The Lord takes up the weak out of the dust and lifts up the poor from the ashes. The Lord makes the woman of a childless house to be a joyful mother of children. Alleluia. A reading from 1 Timothy. First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, 
intercessions and thanksgivings be made for everyone, for kings and all who are in high positions, so that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and dignity. This is right and is acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God. There is also one mediator between God and humankind, Christ Jesus, himself human, who gave himself a ransom for all. This was attested at the right time. For this, I was appointed a herald and an apostle. I am telling the truth. I am not lying. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. Word of God, word of life. Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 16th chapter. Then Jesus said to the disciples, There was a rich man who had a manager, and charges were brought to him that this man was squandering his property. So he summoned him and said to him, What is this that I hear about you? Give me an accounting of your management, because you cannot be my manager any longer. Then the manager said to himself, What will I do now that my master is taking the position away from me? I am not strong enough to dig, and I am ashamed to beg. I have decided what to do so that when I am dismissed as manager, people may welcome me into their homes. So summoning his master's debtors one by one, he asked the first, How much do you owe my master? He answered, a hundred jugs of olive oil. He said to him, take your bill, sit down quickly and make it 50. Then he asked another, and how much do you owe? He replied, a hundred containers of wheat. He said to him, take your bill and make it 80. And his master commended the dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly. For the children of this age are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than are the children of light. And I tell you, make friends for yourself by means of dishonest wealth, so that when it is gone, they may welcome you into the eternal homes. Whoever is faithful in a very little is faithful also in much. And whoever is dishonest in very little is dishonest also in much. If then you have not been faithful with the dishonest wealth, who will entrust to you the true riches? And if you have not been faithful with what belongs to another, who will give you what is your own? No slave can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. And now I'd like to invite the children to come forward for a special children's message. All right. And we got some children helpers too, some youth helpers. Thank you all for coming up. Great. And we got Heidi on the way too. All right. What do you call somebody? And actually, the, the word is kind of in this name too. It's the first part of it. What do you call somebody? Maybe if like the teacher asks or your parent asks or somebody asks you, um, could you help me do this or that? What kind of person do you, do you call that person maybe? It would be a... And the word is in there already, if you help. A helper. 
Who here has, has had a teacher or somebody else say, hey, is there a helper? Somebody, come, somebody want to be a helper with this? And you raise your hand and say, yes, me. Has Matthew wanted to be a helper before? Do you remember a way that you were a helper sometime? It could be any time, something you've done to help. Nice, you helped hold the door multiple times and stack and unstack chairs. Okay, yeah, Shay. So Shay, you helped clean up after class. Outstanding, very, very good. I helped clean up one time after. Actually, it was uh, at a lunch cafeteria, but it's because I started a food fight. <laughs> but I did really help clean up very well. <laughs> Anybody else, any way you served as a helper? How was it being a helper? Was it miserable, terrible, or did you actually feel good being able to, to be able to help? It was fun and it felt good. Yeah, that's part of the secret, and we're going to talk about that in the sermon a little bit too. As helpers grow up, sometimes we say maybe serving as we become older as adults, but that's what it is, is being a helper. And even that very word, helpmate, way back in the Old Testament, that was first described using uh, for women, was being a helpmate. Do you know who else in Scripture that very same Hebrew word is used to describe? God. Yep. It is godly to be that helpmate, to be that helper, to be that servant. And we are called, even when we lead, to be those servant leaders. We are called to serve. And the good news is, it's actually, well, when we can get beyond ourselves and our own stuff and we want and we start serving, it's a lot of fun. We get joy out of it, and it's wonderful to be able to have that sense of purpose and say, yes, I can do something for somebody else that, that's a good thing, and look, and they'll appreciate it. This is great. And so today is all about serving. Now, is, was anybody here a couple weeks ago when we had this song, and the song, and some of our youth here, too, helped lead it, too. It's called, Love, I'll Love, I'll Love the Lord Forever. Does anybody remember that? Were you guys here with it? Okay, so there's another verse in the same song, and thank you, youth. Our youth are coming up to serve. They're helping serve us. And it's going to be the verse, it's going to be serve. So anybody in the congregation who wants to do this too, that would be great. And you'll just kind of make a little quick S with the hands for serve. Okay, and then we'll serve. Ready? And serve. I'll serve. I'll serve the Lord forever. Serve. I'll serve. I'll serve the Lord forever. I'll do my best, I'll do my best, oh. I'll do my best for you, oh, oh, oh. I'll do my best, I'll do my best, oh. I'll do my best for you. Okay, one more time. Can you get the S2 ready? Serve. I'll serve. I'll serve the Lord forever. Serve. I'll serve. I'll serve the Lord forever. I'll do my best, I'll do my best. Ready? Oh, I'll do my best for you. Oh, oh, oh. I'll do my best. I'll do my best. Oh, I'll do my best for you. All right. Thank you so much for coming up and for serving in God's name in beautiful ways. And thank you, youth, for serving too. <clears throat> All right. Big question. Why do we come to church? Why do we come here to worship? This building, this place, this time? Why? Anybody? Why, why do you come here? And anybody could um, answer online too. What did I hear? To praise the Lord. John. John gets the gold star. <laughs> anybody else? Any other reason why you come to worship? Because my mommy told me to and she still does. Yeah. Good job, mom. <clears throat> anybody else? Yes. To be with the congregation of believers, yes, when we are together, we gather together as the body of Christ. It's just, we can always just praise God alone, too, but there's something about coming together and gathering together. And we hear, Paul talks about that, too, that when we are gathered, we become like this body of Christ. We hear in 1 Corinthians 12. Yes. Anybody else? Yes. Just as John would say, it's to praise the Lord. Yep. It's just, just as we heard about. So some may come to worship and say, you know... I like coming to the Sunday service because for the Sunday service, it's liturgical. But actually, liturgy is work of the people. And even though Saturday is different, it's a different kind of work, they might not call it liturgy, but really is a liturgy too. 
Or you might say, well, I like these songs, or I didn't like that song, or we stayed a little bit late because of the way pastor's preaching and the other things went kind of long. And if we have that kind of focus, we tend to not be as happy. But if we come, actually, yes, for the sake of praising God, then we come with that pure, pure focus. And the strange thing is, when we get beyond ourselves and our stuff and how we're hoping to get fed or nourished or up, it's a great thing that we do, though, at Holy Trinity, at Trinity the table here, too, right? We have communion every, every single Sunday. But we get fed and nourished to go out to the Lord, to give and share then from being full and whole. But as we come here, even if we come hungry, but come to praise God, then the strange thing is, as we focus all on God, we get fed and nourished doing that. And if we focus so much on the hymn we wanted to hear and how it wasn't that, oh, we, I wish we'd done this verse instead or whatever it is, not very fed, not very nourished, not very joyous, but we get our beyond ourselves and lift our heads and focus to God, then it's actually nourishing. So I think the psalmist today in Psalm 113 had it, had it right. That's why we worship. Praise the Lord. Praise those servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its setting. The name of the Lord is to be praised. That's why we're here. That's why we come to worship. To praise God's holy name. And that's in the end actually what also fills us and nourishes us. For as much as God does love to be praised, God is also a very wise God and loves us very much and knows that if we come to do this in this way, it is actually filling and whole for us too. And we serve part of that purpose, just like that little helper in a children's message. And how many of you were a helper at some point in school? I know I was. One of those first times you raised your hand and you actually were able to do something that kind of did really help out and it feels good. That's a deep part inside of us from God to be in relationship with God and with each other, to serve with one another and to serve one another. It's why Jesus came humbly and, and washed the disciples' feet and then said, now you go also to do the same. It's not just because God needs us to serve all the time. God could do whatever God wants to do. But God wants to be in relationship with us, wants to be in this loving relationship. And when we serve, we are more whole, we are more full together with each other in that body of Christ and also with God. Now, I want to tell you, too, as we talk about worshiping and praising. So this is the first part, praise the Lord. It may seem strange coming from me wearing my robes and having this stole and on Sunday morning and here in this place because we're doing the exact cookie cutter part of what worship is about. We, we even got here right for 11 o'clock worship here on Sunday morning. This is the time. This is the place to do it. But I would tell you anytime and any place is the place and the time to praise God. If you woke up this morning you know, we just had our call to worship, right, from Psalm 118. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. If you woke up saying that psalm or anything similar, just thank you, God, for giving me the breath of life this day. That is praise. That is worship. Worship can happen in your bed when you get up. It can happen walking down the hall or taking a step. Lord, may this next step be one step closer to you. That's praise and worship. If you got to the end of the day, and said, oh, Lord, you were such a beautiful artist. I watched your sunset, and I see the twinkling stars and the moon, that all that you have set in their places. How majestic is your name in all the earth. That's praise. It's from Psalm 8, too. But that's praise. That's worship. Worship can come from the rising of the sun to the setting any time in between, and yes, through the course of the night, from this time forth and forevermore. And anything we do to praise the Lord is worship. And as far as space, too, this is a holy space. I love this church. I love this congregation. I love the worship space, too, where no matter where you are seated in this church, that you are facing someone else, that we are together in community. And yet it could be anywhere because God created all of creation. 
And that means that all ground is holy ground, that all ground is sacred. And God is the God who is timeless of all times. So just, you know, being with the youth in, in Sunday school just recently and Al, uh, Sal talking about this. Yeah, the great I am. Not I was or just I will be, but I am. And through all of time, all time is worthy of praising God because all time is sacred because God is there in all times and places. So may all of our day be involved in serving in that way, reaching out to praise God and to lift up our prayers to God. As we look to the next part, prayer of praise and then prayer. In 1 Timothy, Paul says early on in the text today, I urge that supplications and prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for everyone, for kings, and for all rulers too. That may seem strange to us. We might think for supplications, intercessions, well, this should be for those who are sick and the needy and the poor, not for kings. What do kings need? But the reality is it is for everyone. And everyone needs the Lord. Everyone is broken in some kind of way if they're apart from God. We all need God. And that's why in this church, too, we keep on praying each week, yes, for both President Zelensky and for President Putin, for Ukraine and for Russia, and for all places that are war-torn and all places that need God's holy name. We are called to pray for everyone. But what is prayer? What is this stuff anyway? What is this supplication stuff? What is this intercession stuff, too, that, that Paul is talking about? And put kind of simply, a supplication is like an appeal to God. It's a, it's a pleading and requesting, Lord, please. Maybe if you had cancer, please, Lord, could you heal me? That's your supplication to God. Sometimes they're seen as interchangeable, supplication and intercession. But if there's a distinction, intercession tends to be on behalf of somebody else. Lord God, please heal my loved one, whoever that is, from cancer. That's an intercession. You're asking God to intercede on behalf of this prayer for another. But they can sometimes be seen interchangeably. And of course, Thanksgiving is that praise to God. But doesn't it seem kind of strange that prayer is just one on the list of things that we think of as all being prayer? And I think that's actually true, though, for us. Prayer is, is supplication. Prayer is intercession. Prayer is petition. Prayer is anything that is communication with God. So that means, yes, when I come around to the table here and I'll have the prayers of the people soon, that's prayer. But prayer is also, if you're brushing your teeth in your bathroom in the morning getting ready and you just kind of think to talk to God a little bit and you're chatting even while you're brushing your teeth going to, <laughs> that's prayer. And prayer is that quiet time when you're listening to God. And perhaps that's one of the most important parts of the prayer, to remember to listen and to remember to listen not just for what we want to hear, how we want to hear it, and when we want to hear it, but to be open to God's time, to God's will, and to God's word for us, and trusting in that answer to prayer for when that time is that it comes. So that means just like praise, prayer can be anywhere, anytime, and all times of the day. Anytime we are mindful of God and in communion with God, we could legitimately call that prayer. So may we continue serving in God's name in praise and prayer and with this purpose, this purpose that is to serve. And I won't go much into the gospel based on time, but the whole dishonest manager, it's some tough stuff again to hear about. But it's also perhaps in our um, fairly wealthy uh, America and Cobb County too, a reminder at the end of it, too, you cannot serve God and wealth. And there's the word serve, again, right there in the gospel, like the word serving that's all here today that is in our mission statement, too. And it's a great phrase of wisdom to remember. Anything else we put first, if we put wealth first, life is ruined. If we put power first, life is ruined. If we put greed first, life is ruined. If we put drugs first, it's ruined. If we put God first, then we are free and free indeed, and all the other things can put, be put into place. We are called to serve 
But it's not just serving. It's serving in God's name. And that's the difference. When we serve in God's name, we do so as ambassadors for Christ, as ambassadors for God. We do so in a way that would be God's will, not our own. And that makes whatever we do, whether it's great or small, holy. Because what makes something holy or hallowed is that God is connected and involved in it. So it could be the smallest little thing. I watched somebody before the 8 o'clock, uh, 8.30 service. It was a little before 8 o'clock this morning. So it was 7.50 something probably. And a person was coming in the parking lot and was just walking along. And he kind of just stopped and looked back. And he reached down and he picked up what I think was just a little tiny piece of trash that he happened to see in the parking lot to bring it in. And I noticed that. That's, that's probably one of the tiniest little things of service you could do. But it was here at Holy Trinity for this day of worship. So I would say it was in God's name. And that was serving. There's so many things we can do. Some of them are great and grand and some of them are tiny, but they're all precious even for the smallest of little things. Every single month, we have committee meetings. And we have them on the same Sunday, and then we have them one after another, and it can get pretty tiring for a pastor or the church council president who also goes to all of them and the church administrator who goes to all of them. But it's a lot better than having it spread out across the month and trying to find different times, different ways. And we also go intentionally for a portion of them. So every single committee then gets, gets to be heard. If we had them all spread out, we probably wouldn't be able to go to all of them anyway. But this way you get your pastor and council president and church administrator to hear what's going on and get our feedback, and we get to hear what's going on too. And then we leave intentionally during the meeting still so that the priesthood of all believers, the servant leaders who are called in those committees can continue leading. So it's a good mutual thing going on. There's one committee in particular, that so many months, um, when we come to that committee, even as we're walking down the hall ahead of time, we'll often hear laughing, this strange laughing coming from this room. And then we'll walk into this room and there's all this smiling and twinkling of eyes, and it is the social outreach committee. Why do they laugh and smile so much? Is it because they all tell jokes? Not really. It's usually about the stuff of the ministry but they know the secret and the secret in all this is that when you serve in god's name that fills a sense of purpose and there is joy in that there is gladness in that and so for those who help with must ministries with those who help with habitat for humanity for feed the homeless as david fricky and others just did there is joy in that because you get to make a difference and be a part of that. You get to be that helper, like that little child. And it's the childlike faith that comes back out on us too when we serve in God's name and it is beautiful. And we remember in all this too that our Lord and King, our Savior Jesus Christ, came to us the very same way, humble, in a little feeding trough, to serve as one of us, to, not to be served, but to serve, and to give his very life a ransom for many, the ultimate serving at the end on the cross. And as we heard earlier, to, to, to wash his own disciples' feet and encourage them and model for them then to do the same. Thank the Lord that that is our leader, because when we think about the world today and how tenuous some things are today, imagine the very Son of God who has the power of the universe, the power of all creation, who could have been the ultimate of all autocrats in all history and takes all that power and uses it to serve in love. What an incredible gift to us and gives us life. Instead of enslaving us on this planet, gives us water and trees and beauty and all the resources and gives us love and gives us covenant and gives us commandments that help us for life's instructions to be able to live a more whole and full life, gives it all in service as a gift. So that's why then we are also called to live serving in God's name. It is what God has first done for us. So let's share that, and let's also share 
the secret when we go out to serve. And the secret that when we serve in response to God's gift of grace, first being the servant leader to us, yes, it blesses the Lord serving in God's name. Yes, yes, it blesses the world when we serve. But the secret is, in ways we never would have known before, it incredibly blesses us and is a gift to us, too, in our hearts. So let us respond, living, serving in God's name. Amen. With one voice, let us share our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we move forward to prayer, you know, we talked about how to praise God and to, and to pray can be in all times, in all places. This Catholic church, too, some may wonder about that. I've got asked about that recently again. It's a small C. The Roman Catholic church is a capital C. The Catholic church we profess in our faith is a small C, which simply means the church universal, the church in all times, in all places. So every time we say that creed, we are also welcoming our brothers and sisters in Christ 
Methodist Presbyterians, yes, Roman Catholics too, all who profess Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, all who profess Jesus as Lord. So may we be mindful of the church in all times and places, even as we praise and in our prayers and in our serving in God's name. As scattered grains of wheat are gathered together into one bread, so let us gather our prayers for the church, those in need, and for all of God's creation. God, our Savior, you keep your church in faith and truth. Accompany those preparing for baptism or affirmation of baptism. Enlighten preachers, teachers, seminarians, and all those who share your good news with the world. We also pray for our Welka Convention this weekend and for all the faithful women gathered from our church and the other churches in your name. Lord, in your mercy. Ruler of the nations, you direct those in authority. Give leaders wisdom and compassion so that they may live in peace and that all may live in peace. We pray especially today for President Zelensky, President Putin, for Ukraine, for Russia, for all war-torn areas, and for all places that most need your prayer, your healing, your spirit. Inspire public servants to follow the example of Christ in love, reconciliation, mercy, and grace. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of the harvest and Lord of the banquet, we pray for food ministries, for clothing banks and emergency shelters. We pray for habitat, must ministries, our feeding of the homeless, and also that you bless and inspire us to generously serve in these ministries and also to serve in our diaper challenge with First United Lutheran, that in ways beyond what we will see or know, that your hands might work through our hands of serving and that your abundant will may be done. Lord, in your mercy, sustainer and giver of life, you bless this congregation with abundance. Instruct us in the proper and faithful use of wealth and resources that we share generously, serving always as your faithful stewards. Help us and other local Lutheran congregations to also serve as a place of faithful welcome to members from Incarnation Lutheran, that they might find a joyful new church home following the closing of their congregation. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Healing, Lord, hear the prayers of your people which we offer before you now, both those aloud and from the silence of our hearts. For Aaron, Allie, and Rick, for Tom, Tim, and Terry, Ashley, Barbara, Bill, and family, for Carlos, Taylor, Stuart, and Shonda, for Scott, Missy, Mariah, and Patrick, for Pamela, Kay, and Cecil, for Charles, Claire, Deborah, and Don, for Julia, for Judy and family, for John, Joey, for Jim and family, for Jane Ann, for Hannah, for Esperanza, for Eric, for Elena, for Emily and family, for Parthi, and for peace and comfort for the families of Officer Koleski and Officer Urban. Lord, in your mercy, gather together in communion with the Holy Spirit, we offer these and all our prayers to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share a sign of God's peace together. God's peace. God's peace. Peace be with you. God's peace. God's peace. God's peace be with you. God's peace. God's peace. God's peace. God's peace be with you. God's peace. Peace be with you. God's peace. God's peace. Peace be with you. God's peace. God's peace. Peace be with you.
God's peace, Matthew. God's peace. God's peace. God's peace. As we prepare for our offerings, of course, those of us joining online, you're always welcome to be able to give. It's through our website, htelcm.org. I was trying to think of a funny thing about the diapers, but I think I better not risk it as a pastor in a church setting. But for how we give, whether it's for the, the ministry of this church ongoing, whether it's for our building or any other special thing, whether it's for our outreach ministries, like our diaper challenge or whatever it is, may each of these ways we serve be gifts back to God, and may we be able to give joyfully in ways that fill us and make us whole. So with joy and thanksgiving, whatever it is that we offer back, may we do that remembering that everything first comes from God and that this is a joyful blessing to give back a portion of what God has first given us. We receive our tithes and our offerings.
Let us pray. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, open to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us always together to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. This week and every week at Holy Trinity Lutheran Church, Every child of God who seeks the Lord is welcome to come to the table. That is, members, visitors, guests, if you seek the Lord here, come be part of this meal with us. The meal is ready. Let us eat together. Our ushers will invite you forward.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. The God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you, inspire you, and lead you in the path of life and serving in God's name this day and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>